YouTube. My name's Lucas. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be doing a really quick and dirty uh, just kind of overview to help you get started and learn how to use Universal Audio Console software with your Apollo. I have an, an Apollo X8P, um, but this totally works for the Apollo Twins. Pretty much any Apollo, even the older ones, they all use console. And console, if you're new to it, can be a little confusing at first, so I want to help you kind of understand how it works, how you should use it, or how you can use it um, effectively, and just how to kind of get up and running quickly uh, without all the confusion. And so it's just kind of got to kind of be like a quick and dirty, no BS explanation of some of the things that I find to be most useful and important that you should know about right out of the gate. So basically the way I like to think about console is actually just a virtual representation of a mixing board or a mixing desk or an analog console. So the software component to it is a little confusing, but I just imagine it really just being like a mixer right in front of me, like a hardware mixer, and it helps me understand it. So everything that's plugged into your interface runs through console and then gets routed to your DAW. So you can add effects and do different things like mixing stuff in console and then print that into your uh, DAW and you can also use console for monitoring. Starting over here you can see each channel strip so we have our level faders obviously we have solo and mute controls and we have panning controls so those are pretty self-explanatory if you ever used a music software. Um, so those are the first things that you need to know about. Up at the top we have gain adjustments for each of our channels and this literally just mimics everything that's on your actual Apollo interface so if you dial the gain here it'll reflect the same adjustment on the interface and you can switch inputs here so you can switch between mic and line and then right here you can add a unison plugin so what unison means is it's a specific type of plugin format that you Universal Auto uses uh, it specifically is for mic preamps that emulates vintage equipment so if we click this we can choose a mic preamp and get that type of tonal character to our uh, microphones so it's really cool and over here depending on the channel depending on the type of input that you have you may have uh, plus 48v which is used to power condenser microphones you want to make sure that's switched off while you're connecting equipment because you don't want that on while you're connecting stuff so i like to switch it off unless i'm using it this is a low cut filter in case there's a lot of bass that you want to cut out and you don't want to do it in the daw um, this is a phase invert button, so if you're recording multiple microphones and have a phase issue, like you can hear flanging audibly, you can just turn that on. And here's a pad, which will reduce the input level if you're recording something really loud, like drums or something, and it's clipping the microphone. So this is your input section right here. After that, we have insert sections, so this is where you can add different effects, like compressors, EQs, guitar amps, whatever it is you want to do. And one thing that you really need to know right out of the gate is there's this button right here, insert effects. You can use insert effects for monitoring um, or you can use them for recording. As you can see, there was a little bit of a lag when I switched. So basically what that means is if you have this red UAD record, it means all the effects that you have over here um, will be printed right in, baked in, uh, when you record it in your DAW, like Logic Pro Tools. But if you have UAD Monitor, what it's going to do is you're just going to be monitoring through these effects, and then it's going to be raw in your DAW. So you don't have to necessarily commit to these effects that you're putting. It's up to you to decide, and you use this button here. So that's really important for understanding this. Here you have Sends. If you want to do, if you want to have like reverb or something, you click this aux area over here, and you get. Um, auxiliary tracks so what I can do is I can put a reverb here um, let's see reverb right so that's on this track and then what I can do is I can send my voice right there and you get reverb so that's not something that I use that much because I prefer to do it in my DAW just to have like a lot of control and to be able to use Valhalla and stuff like that but it's an option here and you can show and hide aux right here and uh, here's your output control, so you can change outputs, but we're not going to focus too much on that right now because it's a little bit more advanced. Right here, there's a button that you need to know about called Control Room. So this has your talkback controls. This most likely isn't something that you're going to be using unless you have like a multi-room studio, but it's just good to be aware of that and also Q outputs right here. So this is actually really important because your Q1 and Q2 um, for me, I have them assigned as my headphone one and headphone two, so those are literally the headphone uh, jacks on the front of my interface. So what this means is you can set up cue mixes that are like different mixes than what you have in your DAW. If your singer is asking for like, you know, vocals louder or whatever, you can change that and assign a cue mix and do it that way. So I have a separate cue mix here for my singer, but for the most part, 
you might just want to use mix for now. So that's going to be the same mix. You'll have a shared mix with whoever's singing or whatever. Um, so you may just want to mess around with this and get it set up to your needs. So it's really useful to know about this Q outputs button because this allows you to adjust settings if you have a specific Q situation that you may need. Your output area, so this will, ref will reflect the volume that you have set on your interface and you can mute it on mute it right here and you can set it to mono too if you prefer to mix in mono. So that's just kind of like a quick and dirty overview of the mixer area. One thing that I should note that's interesting about my case specifically, so I don't like to see extra stuff that I'm not using. So you can hide any channels. So I would actually really advise just hiding all the stuff that you're not using just you can get really comfortable using just the channels that you have so if you're just recording guitar and vocals just hide all the other stuff and just work on the guitar and vocals this will free up a lot of screen real estate for you um, and another thing that you should know is you can link tracks as well so if you have two cables that are plugged into the back of the interface like say for a keyboard or for a digital guitar amplifier or something like that like a stereo input what you can do is you can link tracks so it'll combine one and two or three and four into one channel so you can control one fader and it will automatically pan them hard left and hard right for you so that's super useful so i have a few stereo tracks here obviously my virus synth and my axe effects and stuff like that whereas my individual microphones are all mono so that's cool over here we have different view setups so you can see overview which has everything Thing, just the input section if you want to be zoomed in on that just the insert view and sends view so that's really useful if you want to change that but I like overview because it just has everything and we have a few modifiers here that will allow you to to uh, change the power or remove and copy and do things like that but I don't use those too too much if you do you may want to check out this section and now right over here which is super super important sometimes people have a lot of issues configuring the settings for their Apollo so I want to go through this. This isn't a video manual, so I'm not going to explain every single little thing, but I'm just going to show you some of the things that I've seen go very, very wrong in people's sessions, um, you know, when using other people's Apollos or going to, or actually just helping some of my friends set this up. So in the first pane, actually, let me just say, so you can hold down command and comma to open this up too. And it's also available from the menu view settings, but this button's a really fast way to open it up. Here it shows your sample rate and this kind of stuff, so we're probably not going to really mess with this. It'll show you your device. There's another app that comes with uh, the whole software bundle called the UAD um, Meter plugin, Meter and Control Panel. So I usually open this up right when I start up my computer just to make sure everything's connected properly. So if, you, if it says there's a problem here, that's usually an indication that you're not uh, connected. And also, if you don't see your interface right here, that's usually an indication that it's not connected properly. Um, so here you can control a lot of your individual settings. But I'm going to go to the IO matrix actually. So this will show all of your individual inputs and outputs. So you want to make sure this is set up correctly. If you're new to this whole system, I would recommend just going to the default mode and uh, choose one of the one of the IO presets that's already configured because you don't want any of this to be out of whack. So here it has some display options. So one thing that you should know is uh, this metering option. So pre fader metering. So I like that because I'm trying to monitor all my inputs just the way that they are, regardless of how the mixer is set up. But you can set up post fader metering if you prefer so these are some important settings and here is one thing I wanted to touch on so UAD is going to pre-install all of these plugins for you and that's great but I'm not interested in buying all of them so what I do is I actually hide all the ones that I don't own so you have to just kind of do it one at a time. It's really annoying if you if you even care that much about it. But I like to only see in my inserts area, I only see the stuff that I own, not a bunch of extra stuff that I don't own and I don't want to buy it right now. So I have that set up this way for that. And here's your MIDI panel, which we're not really going to talk about right now because you don't need it to get set up. In the menu, there's actually not really too much going on here, but you should know that you can save your whole setup here, and I definitely do that. I, I probably do it like once or twice per year, so I just have kind of like a default template for the way that I like console to be. But it's super useful to have that if you are using a lot of effects and things for a session. Uh, go, definitely a good idea to save it so you don't lose it. But there's not really a whole lot else here to see. Like I said, you can access settings here. But um, that's pretty much it. I would say that's just like the main things that you should be aware of. Um, really just understanding this insert effects area and using your unison and gain uh, is really just going to help you get started right out of the gate. It's a wonderful software. It's super powerful. Oh, the other thing that is actually super important that I, that I didn't even talk about yet is um, these mute knobs. So the way that one of the reasons why console is so useful in the whole Apollo ecosystem is, is because you can monitor your playing or singing directly through the interface and 
you can have a bunch of plugins and stuff in your DAW that has a lot of latency and stuff, but you can still hear yourself in real time through the Apollo because it allows you to do real time uh, monitoring. It's just lower latency monitoring basically through console. So if you want to do that, you want to make sure it's unmuted. So you're listening to the channel. So like right now I'm monitoring my vocals right here and I have it unmuted. But if you want to monitor in Logic or Pro Tools or your DAW and you have effects on your voice or guitar or whatever in your DAW, you want to do it that way, you definitely want to mute these. So by default, I keep all of them muted because I actually tend to prefer monitoring in the DAW because I have a lot of uh, specific effects that I use. So I end up muting stuff, but for this case, it's unmuted. So you want to pay very close attention to what you have muted and what you don't have muted because you don't want to be listening to double. Um, so if I have this unmuted and I was also recording in Ableton, and monitoring through Ableton, you would hear like a doubled uh, kind of like out of phase vocal and that would be horrible. So some people don't realize that it, UAD gives you this extra layer of complexity because you can monitor before your audio gets to the DAW. So it's really nice if you have like big sessions that have a lot of latency or like the buffer size is higher but it can be like a little confusing if you're a beginner and starting out. So console monitoring is really useful. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions or if this was useful or not. Check out the links in some of my other videos. There's not really like a specific um, download component to this video, but some of my other videos have downloads and there's free stuff on my website that you can get for Ableton and things like that. So check those out. Let me know what you think about this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.